What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to connect our Treebase app with a SQLite database for Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add the database to our Treebase app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we kind of came through here and spruced up these buttons. We got them to work. We got this to where when we click on it, these boxes get filled out with whatever we click on. In this video, we want to go ahead and connect to the database. And we're going to be using the SQLite 3 database for this. Now, once we do that, it'd be really easy to switch it over to the MySQL database or some other database if you want but you'll get the basics of how to do it using SQLite, and then we'll kind of move from there. If you guys want to sort of add a more powerful database in the future, and I have videos on using MySQL in the playlist earlier, so take a look at those if you're interested. So we're using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with going on, oh man, almost 200 videos. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and do that. And we've been doing this the last few videos, so we've got all of our code here. And you'll notice, We've been pulling our data straight out of this Python list. In this video, we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to take all of this data and move it into the database just so there's something in there. We don't want to add these each individually one at a time, so we'll just sort of bulk add all this stuff to the database. And then when the program starts, we'll pull all that stuff out of the database and put it up on the screen. And that's mostly what we're going to look at in this video. So to get started, to use the SQLite database, all we have to do is import it. So let's go import. SQLite 3 and SQLite 3 comes with Python. It's already there. It's already installed. We don't have to install it. We don't have to do anything at all. We can just use it, which is really nice. And, and it's a good reason to use it to learn how to do database stuff. Like I said, switching over from SQLite into MySQL or even Postgres is fairly trivial after we you know, set up the guts of this thing, which we're going to do in this video. So, okay, the first thing we want to do, and let's just come down here and let's, uh, you know, do some database stuff. Right. And so the first thing we want to do is create a database or connect to one that exists. So the nice thing about SQLite is if you tell it to create a database, if it already does, it won't do it again. If it hasn't, it will go ahead and do that. So to do that, we create a connection and I'm going to call this con short for connection. Anytime we're doing database stuff, we often connect using a variable like that. So we want to call SQLite three dot connect. And then we just want to name this thing. So let's name this tree CRM dot DB. So we're doing tree view stuff. We're doing a CRM app, customer relationship management app, whatever. So I'm going to call this tree at CRM dot DB. And that's pretty much it. So now we can create a cursor instance. And a cursor is sort of like, I don't know, I kind of like to think of it as a little robot, it goes off and does things for you. Right? You tell it to do something, it goes off, it does it, brings back the answer, and it gives it to you. It'll connect to the database, grab the data, bring it back. If you're going to add stuff, it will take your data, run it over to the database, add it to the database. It's a little, I don't know, it's a cursor. So uh, I'm going to create a, a variable called C, short for cursor, because we're going to type this a lot. I don't want to type cursor over and over again, so we'll just call it C. And then we want to call the connection, that C-O-N-N -N thing right there. So we're going to be using that database. So con.cursor. And that's a function. So there we go. So that's all we have to do that. Now, a database is cool, but a database is kind of not a thing, right? It's the table inside of the database that's important. It's the table that's going to hold all of our data. So we have to create a table or acknowledge that there is a table. So let's go ahead and create a, a table. And to do that, we call C. That's our little cursor guy, right? And what do we want to do? We want the cursor to execute a command. And there's several different ways we can do this, but this is going to be a lot of stuff. And instead of having this all on one long line, I want to put it on multiple lines. And to do that, we use triple quotation marks. So opening and closing triple quotation mark tags, right? So, okay, what do we want to do? Well, we want to create a table and this is pure SQL, right? If you're in, if you know what SQL is, the structured query language for databases, that's what this is. This is just SQL. So, Let's create table if not exists, right? So if it already exists, don't create it. If it doesn't exist, go ahead and create it. So that's nice there. So if it doesn't exist, 
we want to create a table called customers. Right? And now what do we want in this table? Well, let's just sort of put this on multiple lines. Now we just want to define the table, right? What's the data that we want to store in this table? And we can come down here and look and see what we've been doing so far. We've been using a first name, last name, ID, address, city, state, and zip code. So, and, and that just corresponds to this data. So first name, last name, ID, city, state, zip code, right? So let's go ahead and add those things. So we need to do two things here. First, name them. So I'm gonna call this one first underscore name. And now we need to define the data type. What kind of data is this gonna be? And what we want it to be is text. Now, SQLite doesn't have a whole lot of data types. Some databases have a ton of different data types. SQLite has like four or five, I think. So we've got text, we've got integer, which is whole numbers. We've got real, which is decimal numbers. Uh, null, which means doesn't exist, and blob. Blob is like images and things like that. So really, text and integers are really kind of the only ones we're gonna be using. We're not gonna be using decimals in this. So these are almost all gonna be text or the ID will probably be an integer, uh, but whatever. So let's go ahead and flush this out. So last name, that's gonna be text. We also want ID, that will be an integer. Integer, okay, that's spelled right. Uh, then we want address and that's gonna be text. Uh, city, that'll be text, state, also text, and zip code, that could be an integer, but I'm gonna leave it as text, just because, you know, in some other countries, zip codes have number or have letters in them, so we'll just leave it as text, really doesn't matter, and uh, that's kind of all there is to it. So, that will create a table if it doesn't exist. If it does exist, it won't do anything. So, okay, we've got our table, we've got it defined. Now, what do we wanna do? Well, anytime we do a thing, we also need to commit the changes. So we call con.commit, there we go. And we also want to close our connection to the database, right? You don't really have to, but it's sort of best practices. So that's just con.close. Okay, so every time the program runs, this will happen, we'll connect to the database. If the table doesn't exist, it will create it. If it does exist, it'll kind of skip over all this. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. So the first time around, we kind of want to take all of this data that was we've been using, and let's just put it in the database for now. We're probably gonna delete it later, but just for this video to get something in there to make sure this is all working, let's kind of slap all of this data into our database. So we could do that, kind of hack away at this really quickly and do it. And let's go uh, add dummy data to database or to table, I guess technically. So this is a Python list. So we need to kind of, this thing is a Python list. So we need to loop through it and add each of these things to the database. So we can go for record in data. Remember, that's what we called it. Come down here and look, it's, it's called data, right? Right here. Okay. So for record in data, what do we want to do? Well, we want to see dot execute. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to insert into uh, our customers table, right? That's the table we just created. What do we want to insert? Well, we want to insert the values of, and here we could just put each of these things. So to do this, we're going to use kind of dummy variables and then define them below. So to do that, we use colon. So this is going to be first underscore name, colon, last underscore name, colon, ID, I think, so yeah, ID, then address, city, state, zip code. Hopefully we can remember that. So that is address, city, state, and zip code. Okay, so then we come to this quotation mark and slap a comma in there. And then let's continue this on the line below. So let's give us some space here. And now we just want to create a Python dictionary. And inside of there, we'll just use key value pairs to define all of this stuff. So we do that like first underscore name, colon. And then what do we want to insert into that? Record zero, comma. And then last name. And we're just going to come through each of these and call record one. And remember, 
0, 1. We're just going through here and say this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Because uh, this is a list and we can grab the list items by calling its index number and those start at 0. So John is 0. John is the first name. So we see up here, first name, record, 0. And we're calling this record because right here, as we're looping through the list, the data list, we're calling them record. So record zero, record one, etc. So just come through here real quickly and just record, let's see, this is gonna be two. And then it's address record three, and then city record four. Hey, ooh, there we go. <laughs> and then state colon record five. And finally, zip code. So zip code, that's going to be record six. Oop, there we go. Closing that, closing that. Okay, so that looks good. So we only have to do this one time, and then that'll insert all of our stuff in there. This will commit that change. This will close our connection. Now, one thing we're calling data and our data is way down here. So we need to move this. So let's just copy all of this and control C to copy it, delete it. And let's bring it all the way up to the top here. And then let's just uh, slap this right there for now. So, okay, that will work. So now below here, let's create a quick function. I'm gonna call this query underscore database. And inside of here, let's just copy this because we're going to do some database stuff. There we go. And then let's also copy this, bring it in there, have all this over. Okay, so we're connecting to the database, we're grabbing a cursor. Now let's run a quick test here to see if that worked, if our data got entered into the database. So let's query the database and see. So let's go c.execute, create a little cursor here. And what do we wanna do? We wanna select everything. So let's use the star, select everything from our customer's database table, right? And now let's create a variable called records and let's set that equal to c.fetchAll. If you don't know what fetch all is, it just fetches everything. And this is, I'm kind of blowing through this SQL stuff. I've got a whole course at Codemy on SQLite 3, also on MySQL. It goes into actual SQL stuff. What is SQL, how to do all these things, what all these things mean. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. I've also got a few videos on this with Kinter in this playlist way back when, so you can check those out as well. Um, but I'm not gonna explain it any further than that. You can go learn that stuff in those other videos if you want. So records, see fetch all. So now let's just print to the screen records. And hopefully if this works, it'll put all the stuff onto the screen. Okay, so let's grab this and just at the bottom of our program, let's just run that. So I'll paste that in for now. Go ahead and save this. Let's head back over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this python treebase.py. And when we do, we get our app. Nothing really has changed here, but when we close it, boom, you can see it's printing out all the stuff from the database, which has indeed been added. So awesome. So let's come back over here. And first thing I wanna do is come back up here to the top. And well, first off, let's comment out this stuff because we don't need it anymore. Data, 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 get rid of that, boom, boom, boom. And we also wanna comment, comment out this because we don't wanna add this to the database every time we run the program, right? So I'm gonna comment this out. I'll leave it here so that if you guys want to look at the, the code later on, it'll still be in there, but we don't want to do this every time the program runs. Now, what we want to do is instead of printing this, we want to take this stuff that we fetched from the database and add it to our tree view. As it is now, if we save this and run it again, uh-oh, it won't work because there's no data defined, right? We just commented out our data. So what we need to do is add the stuff from the database that we fetched here to our tree view, right? So we come down here, we've already got the code for that basically right here. So we created this counter and then we're, we're putting the stuff from data, right? And then, you know, we did it like this so that 
we can do even and odd rows to change the color in the tree view, right? So we could do that same thing. Let's just go ahead and copy this stuff. I'm going to control C, copy it and delete it, and then come back up to our query database thing right here. And let's paste this in and we need to come and we need to tab this over. So instead of doing data, we're going to do records because we fetched everything from the database and assigned it to this variable records, right? And it's basically returning, let's see, a list just like before, right? So we can keep the same exact code, just change data here to records. So let's go ahead and do that. Boom, save this. Now down here, at the very bottom here, we're still querying the database. So let's make a little comment. Run to pull data from database on start. So whenever the program starts, we want to query the database, pull in all the stuff, and that should do it. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, uh, clear this screen, and run this guy one more time. And boom, it works. So that's all there is to it. This information came straight out of the database. And we know it did because we commented out our data list. Remember up here, here's where we're used to be getting all that data and we commented out. So the program can't use that anymore. So we're definitely getting it from the, from the database. Also, we can pull up a file explorer and we can look through here and let me just sort of update this. And you can see there's our tree underscore CRM database. Like it's right here in our GUI directory. The GUI directory is the same directory where our tree base file is sitting. And that's where it's the database itself is created. And you can see it's got eight kilobytes of <laughs> information in it. And so that's cool. So that's how you connect to the database. In the next video, we'll get into adding items to the database and pulling out singular items from the database and all that good stuff. But this one's getting a little bit long and we've not connected to the database. We've imported all of our data from a Python list into the database and then pulled it back out to use it in our tree base app. And uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships and pay just $49 access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.